So, Bloodborne PSX just came out and let me ask you a question. How can you not love a game after that intro? Bloodborne PSX was made by Lilith Walter with music made by Evelyn Lark and in my opinion it's one of the most impressive examples of a homemade independent game to ever come out. But let's start at the beginning. Welcome home, good hunter. What is it you desire? So the game starts just like Bloodborne and right off the bat you have to notice how well the PS1 art style fits the universe. For example, the original game's intro has always been creepy, maybe even unnerving. But this version takes it to another level. The way that the werewolf and the messengers look is straight up scary. If this shit came out in the actual PS1 era, this would have been considered a horror game. And just like in the original game, we make our character during the intro and all of the fun favorite options of character creation are included. So I made an old dude in a mask with a green skin and long purple hair. Very grim, very fitting. I also love how you can choose your character's voice by hearing their death cry. <coughs> After that you choose a class and then the game begins. Nice. The intro in the Josefka's clinic is a good way to learn the controls. I played on a keyboard and let's just say that they were a little bit clunky. I mean the game for sure wasn't meant to be played on a keyboard, but I didn't have a controller with me at the time, so I'm glad that it was even an option. But apart from the fact that I had some troubles learning the right buttons to click, the game plays very smoothly and the combat system feels like it was copied one to one from the original game. So you have the regular quick attack, which you can chain into combos, the charge strong attack, you can of course parry, throw molotovs, knives, shoot at your enemies to aggro them, and they all act almost exactly like their counterparts from the original game, so running past everything is still a viable option. Overall, I would say that the combat feels a little bit easier than in Bloodborne for the PlayStation. I didn't really have much trouble with the werewolf in the intro or with most regular enemies, but that just might come from the fact that I've played a lot of Bloodborne recently. But of course the game also isn't easy, you can still get stunlocked by the crows pretty easily, the trolls can surprise you with a sneaky turnaround attack and beating Gascoigne was certainly a challenge. But how big is this game? Well sadly it only features the first big location of the game which is Central Yarnam, but it is redesigned in quite a lot of places with even some additional completely new locations. And there are actually three bosses in the game, the cleric beast Father Gascoigne and a third secret one which I won't be spoiling in this video but he also comes with a whole new location that expands the story of one of the NPCs. The other big expanded location are the Yarnam sewers filled with poisoned and rats and they might be nothing special but they certainly fit the theme and in my opinion they also fit really well into the famous From Software's world design. Of course you can also access the Hunter's Dream and just like in the original game the dream is a place to level up, upgrade your weapons and buy some equipment. Even German is here but sadly you can't fight him. Also some part of the hunter's dreams are blocked and you will require some amount of insight to access them. Also acquiring insight is a bit different, instead of using items you will get it by finding some skulls lying around in different places. Thank god there's no Charlie's Dungeons. But let me talk about the art style and design a little bit more. I obviously love the modeling on all of the enemies. Most creatures look even scarier than on PS4. Well maybe except for some other hunters who kinda look like sloths with black metal makeup. Still the attention to detail and the way that all of the models were transferred into their era appropriate counterparts is out of this world. The environments, the items, the weapons, the animations, it all looks like taken straight from Bloodborne. There is not a single bad model in this game. All of this looks like it was made by a team of professionals and not a single person in their bedroom. 
I also love how archaic everything is. For example, at the beginning of the game you need a key to leave the first building, but it's not enough to have it in your inventory. You also have to equip it first, and honestly it didn't even cross my mind that you should do it and I spent like 10 minutes running around Yosefka's clinic thinking that the game was bugged. But that is not all of course, there are no automatic checkpoints and you have to manually save the game each time. All of the menus look just like they should and I honestly prefer this equipment screen to the one in the original game. Uh, the locations in this are cut to smaller pieces so it's much easier to get lost because you constantly walk between these small chunks of the map and you always get interrupted with loading screens which might not even be real, I cannot really tell. You also have to pause the game to transform your weapon and of course all sound effects are compressed oh, so it's not proper. As for the bugs, there were a couple but it was nothing game breaking and it looks like new patches are coming out with a speed of light so they might not matter at all. But just for integrity's sake I'll add that at one point I wasn't able to walk through an open gate and once I got stuck on the Father Gascoin fight without being able to move in any direction. And you can also look past the textures in some places. Uh, still, these are all incredibly minor things and they didn't stop me from enjoying the game at all. Even if you don't like Bloodborne, From Software or retro games, you still have to appreciate how much work and love has been put into this project. And I didn't even mention the soundtrack yet, so I'll just leave you with a sample and let it speak for itself. <laughs> 